seeing you. Hey, yeah. Let's, okay, elbow, fist, whatever. <laughs> All right, well, cool. Well, nice to meet you. Nice, yes, <laughs> likewise. <laughs> huh? I'm not going to. I'll yeah. yeah. I, I'm not used to even wearing it, much less talking through it. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can take it off to talk. Totally your call. It's up to you.
Please be seated. Well, good afternoon, graduate students, faculty, staff, and friends. For as long as I've been here, we've had this Friday before classes begin gathering or, or convocation. Last year, as you, as you probably could imagine, we went virtual to, to accommodate the COVID surge. This year, we had uh, planned to be in person and hoped we would be, but then along came Delta. Um, so, so we had to pivot once again. Uh, in this room today, though, we have our candidacy candidates and a couple of their invited guests each. The candidate mentors, as, as well as this year's GSBS awardees and their nominators, and our candidacy speaker. For all others, which are comprised of graduate school faculty, students, uh, external guests, and more, this event is being live streamed. So this pandemic has taught us a great deal, but I can tell you what I've certainly learned is how resilient our GSBS community, our graduate school community has been. Our program directors and their staff have kept their programs going. Our course directors and their teachers and educators kept their courses going. And, and perhaps most notably, even in the four COVID surges, um, even when much of the university was working from home, our investigators and trainees have kept their important research going. So I stand here before you all in, in awe of your resilience and ability to be very nimble during these difficult and rapidly evolving times. And from all of us in the graduate school and at UT Health, many, many thanks for all you've done and are still doing, actually. I also want to take this time to welcome all of our about 130 new students this year across our 21 graduate programs. We're so glad you're here. We look forward to getting to know you and watching all of your successes and not too far down the road, hopefully, uh, I'll be shaking your hand at graduation. And another clear lesson I would say um, from this pandemic is the power of science. So great career choice. While I have your attention, uh, new students, I wanna make two simple requests from you. The first request is to get involved in as much as you can. Um, the start, you can start with the Graduate Student Association. Um, it's, they choreograph multiple activities throughout the year, lots of outreach activities. There are lots of opportunities for you to do when we can, when, um, when the time is right. Uh, science outreach at our local K through 12 schools, for example, that's one of many of the things that they do. Um, you're gonna be, I hope, um, strong advocates for science throughout your career, so you might as well get started right away. And it's a great way to teach and motivate local kids, as well as to hone your own teaching and communication skills. So there's something in it for everybody. Besides the value to our community and society, it's a great chance to link up with your colleagues and also begin forming a network that's gonna be so important. And you should try to interact with students across all the programs and also interact with students in our other four schools. It may not seem why at the time, but it's really a good opportunity. And remember, it's, you know, it's important to, to kind of be as spread out and, and, um, and wide thinking as you can. So you should take advantage of those opportunities because they are gonna come along. The second request is to take ownership of your education. Now, I know you know this, uh, but I'll remind you anyway, graduate school is very different from typical education you've received up to this point. Graduate training is a complex, somewhat ill-defined landscape that you must navigate through your own unique path. When I was in graduate school, many, 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 <laughs> three, yeah, that's enough, years ago, uh, someone, I can't, I can't remember who, but they used this swimming analogy to distinguish between medical school and graduate school. It's kind of silly, um, but it stuck with me. They said that when you're, when you're a medical student, it's like being on a swim team. You've got a Speedo, you've got goggles, beautiful chlorinated lap pool, all your friends and family there crowded in the bleachers cheering you on, lifeguards are there to keep you safe, everybody finishes, everybody gets a ribbon. On the other hand, as a graduate student, you're dragged out of bed in the middle of the night, still in your pajamas, you're taken out to the middle of a huge foggy cold lake in a rowboat and thrown into the water and you have to find your way back to the shore on your own. <laughs> no cheering crowd, no lifeguards, no ribbons. 
But it's going to feel amazing when you finally get there, and you will. And speaking for myself, and I bet this is true for anybody that you ask, any of the faculty, graduate school is one of the most exciting and rewarding times of my life. It was tough and stressful, for sure, but it was a blast. But there are many to help, for starters, your classmates, the wonderful faculty in this institution, our departmental chairs, the program directors, the graduate school office. We're all here to help in any way we can. Remember, this is a, this is a team sport. Okay, so let's go ahead and give away some awards. Okay. So every year, the graduate school gives special awards to the students who have been recognized by the faculty for their outstanding work. This first award, perhaps the most long-standing award in the graduate school, is named after Armin Guarino, who's actually the founding dean of the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. The way this works is the faculty of each graduate program identifies students who exemplify excellence in all aspects of graduate study. The students named by the programs are then sent to the Graduate School Awards Committee, which chooses the winner. Now, Dr. McKay Blake served as the chair of the awards committee, so on behalf of the graduate school, I thank her and her committee for doing a wonderful job selecting between a whole bunch of candidates this year. Um, after careful review of the applications, the award committee has selected Dr. Florence Chang from the Radiological Sciences Program as this year's winner of the Guarino Award for Excellence in Doctoral Studies. Dr. Chang will receive a check for $1,500 with a certificate. In addition, her name will be added to the Guarino Award plaque that, that sits in the graduate school office, but it's actually over there for display. I'd like to ask Dr. Peter Fox, supervising professor for Dr. Chang, to come forward and introduce her. Now, unfortunately, as is true for many of these Guarino awardees that have already graduated, Dr. Chang uh, was not able to attend but she has sent a video that will play after um, Dr. Fox gives the introduction, and then I'd ask him to come back up and accept the award on her behalf. Thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to introduce Florence and to describe some of the work uh, that she's done. Um, Dr. Shang's in an unusual program. Uh, she's in not an MD PhD program, which I think many of us are familiar with, but she's in a residency PhD program. And so uh, she was admitted to this program. It's a six year program where she gets a radiology residency and during that gets her PhD in radiological sciences. Um, so, in doing her work, uh, what she chose to do was to extend work that she had begun as a medical student in multiple sclerosis. She went to medical school here and was one of three students to graduate uh, with a distinction in research uh, from the medical school and had begun work in developing a biomarker for multiple sclerosis, an MR biomarker, um, and decided to carry that work forward for her dissertation. And in doing that, she received um, funding from a number of sources. She received two years of funding from an R25, a train institutional training grant from the NIH. She received funding from the Radiological Society of North America. Um, she received local awards, including a Palmas Award from the Department of Radiology. And most recently, she applied for and received, as a PI, uh, an RO3 award. Um, I don't know of any other student that has been so uh, well-funded. As well, uh, the work has resulted in multiple publications, and the Office of Technology Commercialization has um, filed in, with her as the primary inventor a patent for this, uh, so she's got a patent in review. Um, besides all of this, uh, she's a mother. She's had two children while she's been going through this program. Um, <laughs> so I'm in awe of her. I really had a tremendous time working with her, and I think that's enough. We ought to play the, uh, the acceptance speech from Florence. Thank you.
Hello everyone, I'm Florence Chang, and as this year's Gorino Award recipient, I want to thank the Graduate Committee for selecting me. It's such an honor. I want to especially thank my mentor, Dr. Peter Fox, for all his time and energy invested in training me the past several years. I'm also very grateful to Dr. Pam Otto, Chair of the Department of Radiology, who supported me throughout my training. Currently, I'm in my last year of radiology residency here at UT Health San Antonio. I went to med school here and first became involved in multiple sclerosis imaging research as a third year medical student. Then I matched to a combined radiology residency and PhD program. Last year, I defended my PhD dissertation, which was titled Validation of the Atrophy-Based Functional Network Model in Multiple Sclerosis. My dissertation work has led to papers, grants, and awards. But what I want to share with you today are my experiences and lessons learned that may be helpful to you on your journey as a researcher. During my training, one of the most important things I learned was how to be a good mentee. I was fortunate to have Dr. Fox as my primary dissertation mentor. He's one of the top neuroscientists in the world and a pioneer in the imaging field. I remember one of our meetings early in my training where we discussed quantitative imaging analysis methods. We were on the topic of voxel-based morphometry and I had given him a blank stare. I remember him saying, this is gonna be a lot of work, and it was. This reminds me of an article in the Harvard Business Review, What Mentors Wished Their Mentees Knew. There are many articles on the importance of mentorship, but this one addressed the importance of being a good mentee. The article states that mentors are the keys to the success of the mentee, but also that excellent mentees know what type of help they need, select the right people to help them, finish tasks ahead of schedule, are mindful of their mentor's time, are energized and engaging. So unlike the traditional teacher and student relationship, the relationship between a mentor and a mentee is a two-way street that requires a lot of coordination and input from the mentee as well. When mapping out your research career, gravitate towards mentors whose careers inspire you. I encourage you to be active in your own training and to do your part as the mentee. As part of my clinical training this year, I'm rotating through the multiple sclerosis clinic. In taking patient histories and performing physical exams, I'm able to see firsthand the profound disability caused by multiple sclerosis. Currently, MRI is used to evaluate lesions on imaging but the lesions don't always correlate with clinical symptoms. Delayed diagnosis or even misdiagnosis still occur. And without timely treatment, the patients suffer. As I care for these patients, I'm able to better appreciate the bigger picture of my research and identify areas of clinical need. I'm again reminded of my goal to improve the diagnosis and monitoring of patients with neurodegenerative conditions using imaging. When planning and conducting your research, know that with your research, you have the opportunity to impact the lives of patients. So when starting your research journey, take a second, think of the big picture and plan ahead. And when grant submissions don't get funded, when experiments fail, or when papers get rejected, focus on the end goal, which may push you to find new paths towards your goal. Start with the end in mind. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to share my experiences as a proud graduate of the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. So remember, be a good mentee, think of the big picture, plan ahead, and start with the end in mind. Thank you.
just realized something. Is that two years in a row, Peter, that you've had the Vigor? You know, three years in a row. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> that was a great speech, and it was done in a single take, which is amazing. Okay, let's move on to the next award. Um, this next award is presented in honor of General Joe Robles and his wife, Patty. At every level, General and Miss Robles have demonstrated outstanding leadership as well as genuine and care and concern for each community in which they have lived and served. As such, this award will recognize a graduate student in good academic standing who demonstrates excellence in leadership and service within the local and our UT Health community. After careful review of the applications, the award committee has selected Shanae Rhodes as the recipient of the 2021 Robles Leadership Award. Shanae is a student in the Nursing Science PhD program and is mentored by Dr. Carrie Jo Braden. Shanae will receive a check for $500 along with a plaque. Now, Shanae also couldn't be here. She had to leave out of town for a, a, a family matter, urgent family matter, so could not accept this award in person. But Dr. Lark Ford will be accepting this award on Shanae's behalf. This award recognizes a singer graduate, a senior graduate student who has demonstrated the strong uh, potential for research success as measured by publications and awards mostly. And after careful review of the applications, the award committee has selected Michelle Doyle as the recipient of the 2021 Senior Graduate Student of the Year Award. Michelle is an IBMS student in the neuroscience discipline and is mentored by Dr. Greg Collins. She'll receive a check for $1,000 along with an award. Unfortunately, Michelle is not able to be here. <laughs> we do have two, hang on, <laughs> uh, to accept this award. But Dr. David Morlack, the director of the IVMS Neuroscience Discipline, will accept the award on her behalf. This one's here. <laughs> the Heather Menzi Junior Graduate Student Award is presented in honor of Ms. Heather Menzi, a graduate student at UT Health who was unexpectedly taken from us on May 13, 2015. At the time of her passing, Heather successfully completed her advancement to candidacy in the microbiology and immunology doctoral program and already had a publication to her name. She was remembered by her classmates as a servant leader. This award is to recognize a highly motivated, academically successful graduate student within the first three years of their graduate work. Like Heather, the student will have demonstrated tangible traits of servant leadership at UT Health and the San Antonio community at large. After a review of the applications, the awards committee has selected Sarah Massoud as the recipient of the 2021 Heather Menzi, junior graduate student. Sarah is a PhD student in the Translational Science Program and is mentored by Dr. Carol White. She will receive a check for $1,000 along, along with a plaque. At this time, I'd like to ask both Sarah, both Sarah and Dr. White to come forward for Dr. White to present her the award. The Debbie Canales Ural Distinguished Service Award is to recognize individuals who provide outstanding support to the education and research mission of the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. For those of you who did not have the pleasure of knowing her, Debbie Ural was an administrative assistant and friend of Dr. Betty Sue Masters, a distinguished professor and now professor emeritus in the Department of Biochemistry and Structural Biology here at UT Health. Debbie spent countless hours working to help those around her, not just in Dr. Master's laboratory with her colleagues, but many throughout the department. Her generosity, 
of time and resources toward her fellow staff members was legendary. Her high energy and selfless performance was truly admired by faculty and staff throughout the graduate school. She passed away unexpectedly in 2007, and it was at that time that Dr. Mas Masters established the Debbie Ural Memorial Award in her memory. The award committee was chaired by Natalina Martinez, a director of finance administration in the graduate school, and I want to thank her um, for reviewing those awards. This year, the committee has selected Angie Watts as the recipient of the Debbie Canales Ural Distinguished Service Award. Angie is the assistant director of the Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program. She will receive a check for $500 along with a certificate. In addition, her name has been added to the Debbie Ural Award plaque that's, that sits in the office, but it's over there as well um, for display. I'd like to ask Dr. Keith Krolick, former and founding director of the IBMS program, to come forward and say a few words about Angie. After that, if Angie can come forward and accept the award from Dr. Krolick. Thank you, David. Um, I can say right off the bat that Debbie Ural worked right next door to me on the fourth floor, right down the hall. She would have been um, ecstatic about your winning this award. This is, um, this is a, a perfect time for this award to be given to Angie. Um, we're kind of at a crossroads in, our, in the IBMS program, uh, which brought in its first class in 2014. We started working on it a year or two before that. I was tasked um, with uh, leading uh, the efforts to put the program together, and within a few years, it was clear that I needed help. I needed a lot of help. And uh, so along came Angie, and um, we, um, we, in, we did the interview thing, and I talked to a bunch of other people, and it was clear that Angie was exactly uh, what I was looking for. Um, there was um, uh, a number of things that seemed to stand out in her resume and turned out to be exactly what I expected um, as the years went by. Um, she, she's become the the glue of this program. Sorry, your glue, whatever. Um, she, she really, she brings things together. I mean, there are just so many moving parts in the IBMS program uh, that it, it can make your head spin. Somebody's got to pull it all together. There, she deals with um, graduate school leadership, the dean's office, and so forth, and the council of chairs. Uh, she deals with uh, the IBMS leadership, the COGS chair, the program director, and when I was doing it, I'm, you know, I'm no picnic to work with. Um, and then there's the students and the faculty, and she's right in the middle of it the entire way, um, building bridges, getting, keeping communication um, open, knowing what to do when there are problems. She kept me out of so much trouble over the years, um, anticipating problems. I mean, she really, she, she has a vision, and um, I really depended on it um, really um, uh, intensely. And then on top of everything else, over the last couple of years, we've had these extra, extraordinary things come up. The COVID thing um, came up, and now and, um, we're in the process of um, delivering a, our first report to the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. She's right in the middle of that. I mean, it was, it was really um, her that pulled us all together and, and allowed us to get all of these things done. And on top of that, at night, she goes to school. She's in the PhD program for education leadership over at UTSA. She's gonna have a PhD any second now, right? Any second now? And then she's coming after your job. <laughs> so anyway, this is a person that, you know, one of the classic I've got your back kind of people. We depended on her. We still depend on her so much. We're going through the transition now. Mike Burton has taken over as the program director. I'm sure he just, um, feels blessed that he has someone like her to help get him through that process. Um, and uh, Renee, you, of course, the COGS chair, um, is grateful for all of her help as well. Anyway, I can't think of anybody else, you know, that's more deserving of this than you, Angie.
I second everything Keith said. <laughs> Great. Okay. And now it's time to recognize and honor our 2021 doctoral candidates. For the friends and families that are watching live stream and maybe asking what have these students done to merit this recognition, I'm going to give you a brief explanation. Students compete for positions through the application process, and it is pretty competitive. There's a limited number of slots. They enter the program, they're excited, they're inquisitive, explorers, they're destined to, to discover some yet unknown scientific gem. The first two years of this journey in graduate school is particularly tough. They're tested, challenged, and pushed to the absolute limits in their didactic courses and in the laboratory. It's all to ensure that they receive a solid scientific foundation. They are then challenged to survey the scientific literature, identify a gap in knowledge within their specific fields, and design a series of novel experiments to answer the pertinent questions that might begin to close this gap in knowledge. Not only are they then required to pen their ideas in a cohesive and coherent document, they are asked to convince four to five seasoned scientists who are experts in their chosen field that they have synthesized the material and developed the relevant series of experiments to answer these unique questions. And at the end of the all, right on the spot, they learn of their fate. Getting past candidacy is a major milestone, so we pause to recognize this success. Once they pass, they're going to delve into their research. They're going to resurface in about three years from now to once again face a panel of professors and defend their science. If successful, and I'm sure they will be, they'll graduate. And today we celebrate these 35 candidates who have endured the testing and have risen to be PH10 candidates. Candidates, could I ask you to please rise? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in applauding these candidates for their accomplishment of achieving candidacy. At this time, I would like Ashley Bradham, a doctoral student in the IVMS program and the student ambassador of the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences to come forward and introduce today's candidacy speaker. Ashley. So today I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Williams, the Director of Anatomical Sciences, Chair of the Department of Clinical and Applied Science Education, and Associate Professor at the University of the Incarnate Word down here in San Antonio. So Dr. Williams earned her bachelor's degree in biology from Texas um, State University, and then went on to earn a PhD in molecular immunology from right here at UTESCA. Um, during her PhD, she had the opportunity to take an elective course in anatomy from the School of Health Professions, and loved it so much that she stayed involved in anatomy, working as a teaching assistant for the anatomy classes throughout her PhD. Dr. Williams' passion for teaching led her to join the Department of Cell Systems and Anatomy as an assistant teaching professor, where she taught anatomy to students in the dental, PT, PA, and graduate programs. She took on more responsibility in this department, eventually becoming the assistant director of the Human Anatomy Program, coordinating the academic anatomy programs and use of human cadavers here at UTESCA. In 2016, though, Dr. Williams joined um, UIW for the unique opportunity to be a founding member of the UIW School of Osteopathic Medicine. Dr. Williams there established the anatomy section of UIW's master program, um, master's program and developed the anatomy lab utilized by the medical school from the ground up literally from the ground up. She developed the curriculum and helped design and set up the physical laboratory spaces that the department uses. Dr. Williams has a profound passion for teaching, both as it pertains to individual students and to institutions. Her passion for excellence in education is also reflected in her involvement with the national board, um, with national board testing through the National Board of Osteopathic Medical Examiners, and her dedication to fostering growth in the field of anatomy to stay on the cutting edge of anatomy technology. She strives to work with students' strengths to utilize their foundational education to solve the complex issues that will arise in their future roles as clinicians. Dr. Williams takes a real-world approach in her courses, encouraging teamwork among students and frequent connections between course topics and real-life events 
to prepare students to solve the issues and problems that they're going to face as both scientists and healthcare professionals. And so now without further ado, it's my great pleasure to turn the stage over to Dr. William. Wow. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, thank you, Ashley, for that very thoughtful introduction. And I'd just like to say how honored and humbled I am to be invited to share in this wonderful occasion with all of you. I stand here today beyond proud to come back to where I began my graduate career over 18 years ago, telling my age now. <laughs> At times, it seems like it was just yesterday, and it makes you believe that time really does fly when you love what you do and you're having fun. First of all, again, I'd like to say congratulations to the newest cohort of graduate candidates at UT Health San Antonio. You are on an amazing journey. I feel confident in saying that every person in this room is excited to see the wonderful and inspiring things that you're gonna do and accomplish in the months and years to come. Again, it's hard to believe that it's been almost 20 years since I sat right where you are today. Before you know it, you're gonna graduate, some of you are gonna become postdocs, others might start the career right away. Regardless of your path, in just a few short years, you'll likely start a new chapter. That new chapter may be the career you've always known and dreamed of, or maybe it will be just the opposite. Perhaps you'll end up doing something that you couldn't possibly have known or dreamed of as you sit here today. Whether your training leads to a degree in immunology or biomedical engineering, always remember that this is simply a journey to prepare you for your very, very bright future. This journey is a process, and it's a marathon, not a sprint. And trust me, as a former sprinter many, many moons ago, <laughs> that marathon can sometimes seem long, laborious, and even painful in time. But that's OK, because I'm here to tell you that no matter how long and hard the road ahead may be, you can find joy and excitement in this ride. I encourage you all to take full advantage of this amazing opportunity that you've earned. Because in the end, it's truly just that. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity that not everyone has. It's an opportunity that nev not everyone has the, the accomplish, can accomplish the goals for. And so you should be proud and honored to have this. My goal today is to share with you some of the strategies and advice that helped me enjoy my journey. I'll start with some advice given to me by a very wise mentor. My mentor shared with me to always remember that this time in my journey is a unique training opportunity. And I emphasize the word training because this is a time you're preparing for a world unknown. I encourage you to learn. Learn from every experience during this training. Whether the outcome is good or bad, and you'll experience both, I urge you to pay attention to each moment. Learn what works and learn what doesn't. Learn what you admire and what you respect from your fellow classmates, colleagues, and mentors. Learn how you might incorporate those things into what you'll do in your future. But just as importantly, take note and learn what you might do differently. Those things are gonna help support and invoke the necessary change that will be required to move us forward. You are now in a profession and in this world, in this life that we can't always prepare for. So as you learn from this training, don't be afraid of that change. Embrace it, enjoy it, and relish in its possibilities. Because ultimately, change, whether big or small, is what's going to inevitably move us forward. In line with embracing change is remembering that this is your time, perhaps even your expectation to be innovative and creative. To reiterate, you are preparing for a future that is vastly unknown. I can testify that if you would have asked me 20 years ago what I'd be doing today, pretty sure I would have said nothing about leading a department with 50 physicians and scientists at a, med at a new medical school. Never would have dreamed that. And I'm even more confident that I wouldn't have mentioned anything about being in the middle of a global pandemic or even teetering between on online and in-person education. We don't think about those things until they're here, but here we are. So as you prepare for the unknown, try to remember it's not the minutia and it's not the detail of every little single experiment that you're gonna do that will get you through tomorrow. It's about learning how to think your way through any situation, no matter what you're dealt. 
As you continue on your journey, one thing that will make the ride a little easier, maybe even a little sweeter, is to develop trust. One of the most fulfilling things that I feel I get to do each day is I get to go to work with and for a group of people that I trust and that in turn trust me. At least that's what they say. <laughs> I encourage you to develop trust in yourself, trust in your mentor, but most importantly, trust in this process. If you haven't already figured this out, you'll quickly learn that science will take you on a roller coaster. There'll be many days of triumph, but maybe just as many in defeat. Nelson Mandela is quoted in saying, the greatest glory in living lies not in never failing, but in rising every time we fail. So celebrate those highs, but more importantly, push through and persevere through those lows. If you do the work, and you've all made it this far, so you're not strangers to hard work. Even when sometimes things seem like they're not going right for days, weeks, even months, trust yourself and trust your mentor. Together, come up with an innovative way to press on and push forward. If you trust this process, you will not only survive the next few years, but I have every confidence to believe that you're gonna thrive in this environment. As always, <coughs> excuse me, Always remember that one of the fun and exciting things that we get to do each day in this profession is think outside of the box. You've chosen a training, a future profession, in which each day holds the opportunity for a new discovery. That's your honor and that's your privilege, and I encourage you to cherish it and enjoy that ride. I'll conclude today with the last piece of advice on how to enjoy this wonderful journey. No matter the circumstances, always be humble and kind. The work you do today may have a lasting impact on someone's life tomorrow. I remember a time in my training when I got an email from a patient with myasthenia gravis. They reached out to me directly because they thought that the research that I was doing would help them get some relief from this debilitating disease. I was speechless. I was taken aback. But more importantly, I was humbled. I was humbled at even the idea that someone thought that what I was doing, those simple molecular experiments, could make that type of impact. While I obviously couldn't help them directly, it made me realize that the work we do each and every day, the work you will do, moving forward will inspire hope, inspire possibility to change lives for the better. In a world when people are dealing with so much uncertainty right now and personal tragedy, Always be humble and kind. Be thankful for this amazing opportunity because it has the potential to change lives. So with that, I want to once again say congratulations and good luck. And I look forward to witnessing great things from each and every one of you. Thank you. Well, everyone gets ready, I'll introduce myself. I am uh, Dr. Andrew Sampson. I'm the director of the Radiological Sciences Graduate Program. And before we begin, out of all the candidates, how many of you were born before 1987? A few, a few, good. You were the ones that were born when, when Dr. Weiss received his PhD. <laughs> just, just so you know. <laughs> all right. It is now my pleasure to present our 2021 PhD candidates. Candidates, when I call your name, please just come forward to receive your coat. Are there gonna be slides to have names? Last year, or last time we did, I don't know. Oh, there we go, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm waiting. So, all right, here we go. Yoel Augusta Pena, Supervising Professor, Dr. Feng Chung Yang, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Cancer Biology Discipline.
Noor, Newell, sorry, Noor Abadi, Supervising Professor, Dr. Rodney Chan, translation, oh, coded by Dr. Anders Carlson, Translational Science Program. Ada Badamchi, Supervising Professor, Dr. Patrick Sung, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Biomedical Mechanisms and Medicine Discipline. Angela Jasper, Supervising Professor, Dr. Patrick Sung, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Cell Biology, Genetics, and, Molec and Molecular Medicine Discipline. <laughs> Jeffrey Katz. Supervising Professor, Dr. Patrick Sung, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Biomedical Mechanisms and Medicine Discipline. <laughs> Adam Sachs, Supervising Professor, Dr. Patrick Sung, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Biomedical Mechanisms and, Mel and Medicine Discipline. <laughs> Catherine Bailey, Supervising Professor, Dr. Tim Anderson, coded by Dr. Frederic Chevalier, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Molecular Immunology and Microbiology Discipline. <laughs> Makund Vandari. Supervising Professor, Dr. Si Yang Shen Zhen, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Cell Biology, Genetics, and Molecular Medicine Discipline. <laughs> Christian Cervantes, Supervising Professor, Dr. Zhen Ming Zhu, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Molecular Immunology and Microbiology Discipline. <laughs> Patrick Conway, Supervising Professor, Dr. Daruka Mahadevan, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Molecular Immunology and Microbiology Discipline. Benam Ibrahimi, Supervising Professor, Dr. Rat Ratna Velamudi, coded by Dr. Nikkei Blake, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Cancer Biology Discipline. Ruby Escobedo, Supervising Professor, Dr. Deepak Kaushal, 
Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Molecular Immunology and Microbiology Discipline. Sean Flynn, Supervising Professor, Dr. Charles France, coded by Dr. Nikkei Blake, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Physiology and Pharmacology Discipline. <laughs> Hannah Kitten, Supervising Professor, Dr. Andrew Sampson, Radiological Sciences Program, Medical Physics Track. <laughs> Ellie Leinart. Supervising Professor, Dr. Daniel Sines, Doctorate of Medical Physics Program. <laughs> Jimish Patel, Supervising Professor, Dr. Neil Kirby, coded by Dr. Daniel Sines, Doctorate of Medical Physics Program. Karen Lindquist, Supervising Professor, Dr. Armin Akopian, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Neuroscience Discipline. George Naratidam, Supervising Professor, Dr. Armin Akopian, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Physiology and Pharmacology Discipline. <laughs> Claudia McCowan, Supervising Professor, Dr. Dmitry Ivanov, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Biomedical Me Mechanisms and Medicine Discipline. <laughs> Saif Nirshaur, Supervising Professor, Dr. Manjit Rao, Bio Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Cancer Biology Discipline. Stephanie Nordmeyer, Supervising Professor, Dr. Tim Anderson, coded by Dr. Wink Winka Lecek, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Molecular Immunology and Microbiology Discipline. <laughs> Christian Odfalk, Supervising Professor, Dr. Sarah Hopp, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Neuroscience Discipline. <laughs> Angelica Olmo Fontanez. Supervising Professor, Dr. Jordi Torellis, 
coded by Dr. Renee Yu, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Cell Biology, Genetics, and Molecular Medicine Discipline. <laughs> Alyssa Shami, Supervising Professor, Dr. Jordi Torellis, coded by Dr. Renee Yu, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Cell Biology, Genetics, and Molecular Medicine Discipline. <laughs> Muslima Sonia Razakyar, Supervising Professor, Dr. Peter Fox, Radiological Sciences Program, Neuroscience Imaging Track. Jonathan Town, Supervising Professor, Dr. Peter Fox, Radiological Sciences Program, Neuroscience Imaging Track. Stephanie Rowan, Supervising Professor, Dr. Emily Ramirez, Translational Science Program. <laughs> Afaf Saliba, Supervising Professor, Dr. Kumar Sharma, coded by Dr. Guttam Ghosh Shadhuri, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Cell Biology, Genetics, and Molecular Medicine Discipline. <laughs> Noah Sanchez, Supervising Professor, Dr. Jeffrey Clark, Radiological Sciences Program, Medical Physics Track. <laughs> Sruthi Siva Basker, Supervising Professor, Nikos Papanikolaou, Radiological, oh, coded by Dr. Daniel Sines, Radiological Sciences Program, Medical Physics Track. <laughs> Saranya Srinivasan, Supervising Professor, Dr. Nu Zhang, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Molecular Immunology and Microbiology Discipline. <laughs> Layla Takahashi Ruiz, Supervising Professor, Dr. April Reisinger, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Cell Biology, Genetics and Molecular Medicine Discipline. Kathleen Tuitt, Supervising Professor, Dr. David Morlack, Integrated Biomedical Biomed Sciences Program, Neuroscience Discipline. <laughs> McKenna Woolett, Supervising Professor, Dr. Jun Kim, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Physiology and Pharmacology Discipline. <laughs> Ms. 
Cassandra Walsh, Supervising Professor, Dr. Jeffrey Boychuk, Integrated Biomedical Sciences Program, Neuroscience Discipline. Two other Doctor of Philosophy candidates are being coded in abstentia. These trainees have completed the requirements but were unable to be with us today. Salvador Alejo and Carlo Vance. Thank you. He doesn't want to drink my water. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Sampson. Well done as always. Thanks for the joke about my age. Um, how about one more round of applause for our candidates? At this time, I would like to call Dr. Nikkei Blake, Senior Associate Dean in the Graduate School, to lead our candidates in the pledge. Candidates, please rise. <laughs> the pledge is on the screen for those of you, if those of you who are students, if you want to say this with them, that is just fine. After three, one, two, three. As a candidate, I... <laughs> commit to the following. I will conduct my research and professional endeavors with honesty and objectivity. I will apply the highest standards of ethics. I will always conduct myself with integrity, respect, and dignity. I will be an example for the next generation of graduate students. I will nurture my dreams and keep sight of my goals even in times of adversity. I will respect, represent UT Health, sorry. <laughs> UT Health, San Antonio, well, and be an ambassador for the institution. I will aspire to lifelong learning and use my skills to inspire and mentor future generations. This I will do. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank Dr. Williams for coming back to campus and delivering such an inspirational talk to our students. It was wonderful. I appreciate it. Congratulations again to our awardees and all the nominees and to the mentors that not only trained these students but also took the time to nominate them for these awards. Again, welcome to our new students. And finally, once again, congrats to our 2021 doctoral candidates. So this ends our 2021 convocation candidacy ceremony. So the candidates are going to exit the auditorium first, and as you exit, please follow the, to the staff out the door to your left, and we're going to take a group photo on the steps out there. Um, and then the, the faculty will follow, and I'd ask guests to please remain seated until all students and faculty have exited the auditorium. Um, we finished a little bit early. Uh, food will be ready in the breezeway. Um, sometime around 5 o'clock, and so if you've RSVP'd, you can present your tickets and get food. Please remember that this is a grab-and-go event, as tempting as it may be, uh, to congregate and eat together. We'd love to. Due to the university guidelines, it's, it's not allowed at this time. So again, um, doctoral students, congratulations, um, and thanks to everybody 